Another pandemic is raging in our country. Freedom cannot be achieved unless the women have been emancipated from all forms of oppression. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. So last week we spoke about the Amanda Tway case where there was an apparent love triangle between her ex-boyfriend and her apparent new love interest. Today we're going to talk about a case that is another suggestion, so thank you very much. But this case today is bordering on the love triangle aspect, but with a massive twist. This case involves a husband, a lover, and the lover's friend. And it just gets messy throughout this case. So with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. Today we are heading to Trobeja, previously known as Port Elizabeth, and here we are talking about a married couple with a wife's name, Vicky Tablanche, and husband named Arnold Tablanche. When Vicky and Arnold first got together, everything seemed great. They were a strong couple, they were madly in love, and one thing led to another and Vicky and Arnold had a son together. But just like a switch, something changed, and Arnold was apparently not very nice to Vicky. According to Vicky, Arnold was an incredibly cruel man. He would often cheat on her and brag about it. He would swear at her, smack her, and Vicky had just had enough. And not so soon after Vicky's son was born, Vicky packed her bags and left. Vicky then applied for a divorce. Arnold agreed to this divorce, but they were in court because they were trying to fight for custody of their son. But during the court proceedings, Arnold was instructed to pay alimony to Vicky because she had the care of their son for the meantime while the court battle was still going on. And Arnold was told to pay for the house, I think the Wi-Fi and the car, but the Wi-Fi and the car are on some news reports and not on others, but he definitely had to pay for the house and for the upkeep of his son. And just like most divorces, he would have to pay this alimony until Vicky remarried. But this was in 2020 when the couple got divorced and the custody battle was a very nasty one because Arnold was really desperate to get hold of his son and to have full custody of his son. And Vicky was obviously not letting this happen knowing what Arnold was capable of doing. But sadly, with all that Vicky had been through, what Arnold had put her through, she was feeling quite low and this custody battle was taking a lot out of Vicky. And sadly, she did try to take her own life. But during her lowest of lows, she actually met a man and they started texting and talking to each other and eventually they went on a date and they really liked each other. And this man's name was Reynard Leach and he was 32 years old at the time. Vicky was around 41, 42 years old at the time. And her ex-husband Arnold was 55 years old at the time. So Vicky and Reynard started dating, they seemed very happy together, and soon after Vicky and Reynard started dating, it seemed like Reynard was either staying at Vicky's house quite often, or he had moved in there. But Vicky felt safe with Reynard around, he came during her lowest of lows, he was there to support, there was another man in the house, and she just felt safe and comfortable in his presence. However, Arnold was not impressed by Vicky's new relationship, apparently, and he apparently was quite upset at the fact that Reynard was using the Wi-Fi and using Vicky's car because some reports said that Arnold was paying for these things and Arnold was saying that why should he be paying for this if some other man is using it when he's supposed to be just be paying for it for Vicky and her son. But it's unclear whether he stopped paying these just because Reynard was using them. But this was just hearsay according to the Wi-Fi in the car. But speaking about hearsay, apparently Arnold had been married three times, Vicky being his third wife. But it also seems that Vicky being his third wife was not the only wife of Arnold to suffer some kind of mental stress being with Arnold. And it seems like Arnold's first wife actually checked into a psychiatric unit after they got divorced. 
and Arnold's first wife apparently went to the psychiatric hospital because she was under severe mental stress from what she and Arnold had been through during their relationship and also what Arnold had put onto her. But these are all apparent and through some sources. So things got very rocky between Arnold and Vicky with Reynard in the picture. But because Arnold and Vicky shared a child, Arnold was not going anywhere soon and he was going to be like a thorn in Vicky's side each and every day to make sure that everyone knows that he's trying to get custody of their child. So life moves on and now we are fast forwarding to October of 2021, so last year this time. So it's now October of 2021 and Reynard, Vicky's boyfriend, now comes screaming into the police station. He gets out of his car, comes running up to the desk and he says, listen, I want to report my girlfriend missing. So the police are like, okay, let's fill out some paperwork and let's get some details down about your girlfriend. So they describe the height, the eye color, hair color, all that. And then they're busy writing down how many days has your girlfriend been missing for? And Reynard says she's been missing for four days. So police kind of think, okay, she's an adult. Adults are allowed to come and go as they please. But Reynard kept saying that it's unlike her. It's unlike her. She has a child. Why would she just go missing? So police just keep taking down the detail. They're listening to what Reynard has to say. And then once Reynard leaves and all the paperwork's filled out, he then goes home and police then get to work trying to look for any clues that are leading to Vicky to Blanche. And not even five hours after Reynard had reported Vicky missing, did the police then get a call to their officers that they need to go and look at some house. It looks incredibly dodged. It seems like a lot of nonsense has been going on in that house and police need to go check it out because they feel like someone got hurt there. So police then drop whatever they were working on, including Vicky de Blanche's missing persons report, and they now head over to this mysterious house that they got a call from anonymously. So police then get to this house, they see that the garage doors are wide open, the gate is open, and we all know in South Africa that this is not a good thing. Police also notice that the windows have all been shattered, and because everything is open, police basically walk straight into the house, and they start looking around in the house, and there's an absolute pigsty. There's stuff everywhere, there's clothes everywhere, the cushions have all been pulled off the couch, drawers have been open, and we know that this is a sign of a clear break-in, But police thought that this wasn't quite a normal break-in because of what they found everywhere inside the house. And police start looking and there's drugs everywhere. On the floor, on the counters, in the couch, on the bed, everywhere. So while police are busy looking at this, they're seeing all this mess, they then notice some random guy coming into the house. And the guy shouts, hey, what are you doing in my house? Police are like, "Um, we got a suspicious call that this place has been ransacked and suspicious activity was here and that someone got hurt. And this person then replied, no, this is my house. So police then stop. They take a second look at this guy and they say, hey, weren't you that guy who just came to the police station to report his girlfriend missing? And it was true. In fact, Reynard. So Reynard then steps back. He's quite shocked that they actually remember him. And then the police say, just just wait there one second. And they get on their tablet. They start looking up who owns this property. And the person who owned this property was Vicky to Blanche. So the police are like, okay, wait, something's not right here. You just reported your girlfriend missing f- around about four or five hours ago. She'd been missing for four days. Now you say that you live in this house that's owned by Vicky to Blanche that you just reported missing but this place is full of drugs and it's been ransacked and you never reported this. So police obviously thought that this was suspicious. Reynard was saying nothing, but police said, listen, you need to come to the police station because firstly, you just admitted that this was your house. It's absolutely full of drugs. So you need to come with us. So the police then arrested Reynard. They took him to the police station for some questioning. So when police got Reynard to the police station, they sat him down in the interview room and they said, look, Reynard, We found drugs everywhere in your house. Firstly, whose are they? And if they were Vicky's and she was using them, surely you would have known this and you would have reported this when you reported her missing, that she may have gone on some binge and that's why she wasn't here. But if they aren't Vicky's, then whose are they? So Reynard that stops, he breaks and he's like, okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. I know someone who knows where Vicky is. Let me write down his details. You can go ask him, kind of just like leave me alone kind of thing. So Reynard then writes down the address of someone who apparently knows exactly where Vicky is. And police think, okay, we'll follow this up, but you wait here. So they then lock Reynard up in like a little day cell. And they then head off to this address where apparently Reynard said 
someone knew Vicky was. So then police arrive at an address belonging to a guy named Dylan Cullis. Police then knock on the door, they're waiting, and a young guy then steps out. He's only around 24 years old. And police then say, hi, we're here, because someone said that you know where Vicky to Blanche is. Dylan looks almost like a deer in headlights. He's gone spook white, absolutely no color in his face anymore. And Dylan is incredibly scared. He says he doesn't know what's going on, but police are not falling for it. And they then tell Dylan that he needs to come with them to the police station because someone pointed him out specifically knowing where Vicky was. So police then sit Dylan down as well inside the interrogation room. Reynard is not in here. He's still in the day cell. And they say, listen, Dylan, someone pointed you out. You need to fess up what you know because signs are all pointing to you. So what do you know? So Dylan absolutely caves and he says that actually Vicky isn't missing. He knows where she is because he buried her there. Sadly, Dylan confessed that Vicky to Blanche is sadly deceased and buried on a farm. So sure enough, cops then head into the car, they drag Dylan with them and they take Dylan to exactly where he said that he buried Vicky. They then start digging and sure enough, they sadly find the body of Vicky to Blanche inside a small shallow grave. So the police then arrest him on the spot for the murder of Vicky to Blanche. But now police kind of have to put all the pieces together because Reynard just said that this was the guy and Dylan said that he didn't do it. He was just the guy who buried her. So because of this, police then take Dylan also to a cell and they then pull Reynard out of the other cell and him now into an interrogation room. And they then tell Reynard, listen, Dylan said that he wasn't the guy who killed Vicky. He was just the person who buried her. So who did it? Reynard wasn't saying anything, so they couldn't get anything out of him. So then they pulled Dylan back into the interrogation room. And then they said to Dylan, no one else is speaking. This is all going to be put on you if you don't spill the beans. So Dylan then said that he will tell them everything in the hopes that he gets a lighter sentence. And yes, you could possibly get a lighter sentence if you say everything and you help police. However, that's not guaranteed. But Dylan tried his best to be able to get this. And he then apparently told police everything. Dylan then said that apparently it was Reynard who murdered Vicky and he did this by first crushing up some sleeping pills or some kind of pill and putting it in her drink. Vicky then apparently got very dizzy quickly and her stomach was very sore so Reynard then said to Vicky while Dylan was also in the house that they will then help her to the bedroom. Vicky then went to lie down in the bedroom and as soon as she was on the bed Reynard then apparently took a pillow and pushed it over Vicky's face and held it there until she stopped moving. Dylan said that Vicky did put up a fight, but she was so weak because of the sleeping pills that she hardly made any dent to Reynard or hurt him at all. So police then got off their chair, they headed straight back for Reynard, they pulled him out of the cell, sat him down in the interrogation room again, and said, we know everything, you need to come clean now. So Reynard knew that the jig was up, Dylan had said everything, so Reynard then said yes, he did murder Vicky, but he was told to do so by Arnold to Blanche. Now this is where things get even more hectic than they were already. Arnold to Blanche, remember, is Vicky's ex-husband. Reynard was then Vicky's boyfriend. Dylan is Reynard's friend. So apparently, Arnold to Blanche, months ago, when Vicky was at her lowest of low, he apparently hired Reynard to date Vicky. He did this so that Reynard could keep an eye on her and also to try and jeopardize Vicky's chances of the child custody battle. Apparently Reynard was the last step in Arnold's plan because apparently before Reynard, Arnold tried to even pay Vicky's parents to try and convince her to just let the child custody battle go so that Arnold could have full custody of their son. He apparently tried to give them 50,000 Rand each to try and convince Vicky. But apparently Reynard was quite the shady guy. He was apparently on drugs and part of quite the hectic crowd. Arnold knew that Reynard was a drug user, so what he tried to do was to get Reynard to date Vicky, and then for Reynard to convince Vicky to try and take some drugs, to try and be caught out using drugs, and this would lessen her chance of winning the battle. But this didn't work because Vicky was not a chance taking that stuff. She wanted 100% to look after her child. She wanted nothing to jeopardize this. And actually, she just wasn't interested. She knew that Reynard did drugs. And she knew that he often brought friends over to the house. Maybe she was comfortable with this. Maybe she wasn't. 
But eventually Arnold got quite frustrated that his plans weren't working. So he then told Reynard that, listen, this is the end of the line. You need to get rid of Vicky now. So Reynard apparently didn't even question this. He just wanted to know that he was going to get paid at the end of the day. And he didn't really hesitate at the thought of killing Vicky. So apparently this plan was then given to Reynard by Arnold and Reynard was just there to execute it. So Reynard then asked Dylan to help him to murder Vicky. And Vicky must have thought that Dylan coming over to the house was just another friend of Reynard's. So between the 19th and 20th of October 2021, Reynard and Dylan then plotted to murder Vicky. They knew exactly what they wanted to do, and as we heard from Dylan earlier, Reynard apparently put some type of drug into her drink, and she was very weak, and then he suffocated her to death. But now, these two men have a body, and they don't know what to do with it. But what they did do is they changed Vicky's clothes, they then wrapped her up in a bed sheet, they then called Arnold and said, listen, we need a big enough vehicle to transport Vicky, so Arnold then got a vehicle to Vicky's house. Dylan and Reynard then shoved Vicky's body into the back of this vehicle and they then drove to try and figure out what exactly they needed to do with Vicky's body. They apparently then came up with a plan and they then decided to bury her on a farm in a shallow grave where the police ended up finding her. But this wasn't the end. They needed to go back to the house and absolutely trash Vicky's house because Arnold wanted to make sure that it looked like to police that she was a hectic drug user and that she just went on some binge and then went completely AWOL. And remember that anonymous phone call that the police got hours after Reynard then apparently reported Vicky missing? Well, apparently, it's absolutely hectic this case, but apparently Arnold was busy dating a married woman and this married woman who he was cheating on Vicky with before they got divorced... She then called the police to tell the police that they need to go to that house because Arnold wanted to lead police back to Vicky's house, the drug house, to make sure that this was on her record. So all three of these men have been arrested and they are awaiting trial. But it seems like the case will go forward again in October, but hopefully this time it goes on and justice can be served for Vicky and her family. But this case has been postponed for so many reasons. The last reason was that there was a delay because apparently the police investigating this in Klabecha, they had run out of the software, apparently it expired, the license, that was used to read iPhone data and like messages and stuff. So apparently the license hasn't been renewed. They were waiting for the license to be renewed and it's just it's absolutely it's actually quite bad and you do want to think and sit back and laugh at these things that just go wrong in South Africa but at the end of this is a family waiting for justice and being hurt every time that this trial gets postponed because of stupid mistakes like this but let me know what you think of this case down below and absolutely how mad it was we do send our condolences to Vicky's family and to Vicky and we hope that she may rest in peace but that's all from me let me know what you think down below and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic weekend further. Stay safe out there and I'll see you again next week. Bye.